Welcome back everybody. We're going to continue on with our shifting tutorial and we're going to do a bunch of helpful hints and some information about your instrument that's going to help you as you are shifting. All right, one of the basic things is again we have we're trying to extend the range of the instrument and we only have access to our four fingers and our thumb if we are a cello or bass. So there are many more notes than we have fingers so we have to get we have to kind of use those fingers multiple times as we get up the instrument. As a reminder, your thumb must move if you are shifting, all right? There are techniques where we stretch our fingers, all right? That's extending and stretching, but that is not shifting. We want to move the entire hand in these exercises. That is what shifting is, all right? So as you noticed when I was playing my instrument, um, you have to make sure that you are not holding the instrument with your left hand, all right? So if you're a violin or viola, you need to hold the instrument with your head and trap it between the shoulder. All right, I'm definitely using my shoulder rest so it's not slipping around because I want to have this. If I give the job of holding the instrument to the left hand, then I'm going to have really bad technique. If I'm a cello or a bass, I want to lean that cello into my body and have the bouts, these guys, on the in inner part of my knees. And if you are a bass, you're going to lean that... Um, side of the instrument into your hip if you're standing or even better uh, sitting down and letting the instrument uh, on a stool and letting the instrument lean into your left leg. You will find that most bass players that are playing advanced repertoire where they are down, they've shifted way up high on the instrument, that they do not play that uh, with a standing up posture. Most of them sit. All right, that's because they just it's too much to have to balance the instrument and hold on and they want to give that job to their body okay now as you're going up the instrument you have to make sure that the that you know that the space gets smaller uh, between the notes as you go up so I'm gonna just show you I'm gonna give you the example that I have in the sheet but I'm gonna show you uh, uh, on my guitar what we're talking about all right so on the guitar you'll notice that I have these uh, the frets and you'll see this double one here. That is the octave up. So the space on the guitar from one octave here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. All right, that is an octave. Now to get to the next octave, it's gonna be down here and you'll notice that that spacing is smaller or you'll notice that the frets get smaller as we go up. That is true across all fretted and all string instruments. I'm going to show you another one here. Alright, this is a mandolin. It's essentially a violin with frets. And you're going to see that those frets get smaller as we go up. We have that double that shows where the octave is. And then we're going to have another octave to the next one and it's very small. So, what does that mean for you as a string player? Okay, so if I go from the A to that harmonic, that harmonic is right here and that'd be double dotted if I was on a fret instrument. So this space is 12 notes fit into it. Now if I go from the next harmonic, divide it in half, to divide it in quarters, it's going to, all those 12 notes need to fit in that area. All right, and that is going to make it that your fingers need to um, have less space between the whole and the half steps. Okay, so as you are going up the instrument, your fingers are gonna kind of get crunched back in together. You might even have to move fingers out of the way. All right, so the next thing is dealing with what we call action. All right, and the cellos and the basses deal with this a lot because of the tension that their strings are under, but the violins and violas have to deal with it as well. So basically action is the space of the string above the fingerboard. And you'll notice that as I'm going to the lower where I live in first position, there's not very much space between the string and the fingerboard. It's easier to play there. But if I go up in these positions, my hands are closer together and I need to press down with a much more downward perpendicular. So if I'm up here, I have to trap that finger, I have to press down with a lot more direct vertical or perpendicular pressure to get that to sound. Lots of times people say that it sounds squealy because you have to really press down. 
if you are a cello or bass, a lot of times you're using the thumb position and you're using the thumb to trap that string down and then play the notes. It makes your life a little bit easier because you're getting rid of that some of that action. Okay, if you are having trouble finding notes in the top part of your instrument, maybe you're at to play this figure. E, F sharp, G. You're like, it's not sounding quite right. Play it down. Oops, that was bad. Let's try it again. All right, I like that. I like that. That sounds. And I have to actually move. It's too high. My fingers are too big, so I have to slide them out of the way. I have to move that second finger out of the way to get that note to be in tune. All right. Uh, I again, I play that in the lower octave, and it was also in first position. Also, if you are tr if you're struggling with the sound, like you got, I got this right, it's in tune, but it's sounding not the best. Me, um, the biggest things that are happening is that you are probably not making the sound point close enough to the bridge and moving your finger fast, me, moving your bow fast enough. All right, think about that. This the string is now less than half. If I'm way up here. It's a normal vibrating. So you have to make sure that you are actually getting that string to move and moving the bow sounding point closer to the bridge. All right. Um, you also may notice that you're doing everything right. The bow's in the right spot. It's all going well, but it's still not sounding the best. This is where when you spend more money, add zeros to the end of that instrument price, is that some of those things go to be a lot easier. So a race car is going to perform at high speeds way better than a you know a regular cheap car, and but you pay for that performance. That's true for an instrument's ability to speak. So if I want my instrument to really speak well on these upper G string notes. I'm going to have to pay a lot more. If I pay more and more and more money, those things are going to speak clearer, especially in our higher positions on um, a number of strings and our harmonics. Um, speaking of harmonics, you can use those to help you find notes in the upper octaves. So I use this E. I use those harmonics a lot to get my positions. So now I'm in seventh position. Now I'm in, and now I'm in six. Or I can find those positions pretty easily. I have another harmonic. That B is a harmonic that I use a ton on my instrument. I can use the next E harmonic. And you're like, oh, how can I use my tone points? Well, let's say I have to play that G. This G. If I'm way up in position, I'm like, what does that G sound like? All right, that's my G. I use my open string. I, I match it with the tone point. All right. The last two things are that we usually stop counting positions after we've gotten about one octave up or to that harmonic. All right. First finger in seventh position. All right. Beyond that, thumb position for basses and cellos. I don't be like I'm in. I'm in. I'm in tenth position. I'm eleventh, and I'm an extended. Uh, usually when we get up that high, we just want to find a finger pattern that works well with whatever music we're trying to play. Maybe it works well with one, two, three. Maybe it works better with two, three, four. All right, we want to find something that fits our hand and we use all those strategies of tone points, of playing in the lower octave, of harmonics to help us find our notes. All right, so I have a bunch of exercises that we're going to talk about in the next video and I will see you there really soon. Thanks.